Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Harsh times, movie, thoughts. I have to admit, I, I like the ending, but I'm not sure I love it. The, I think it's appropriate that Jimmy does die, and it's not that I wanted the character to die, but as the movie went along, it was clear that that was going to happen. It, it was just, it was the only way his story could end, would be in, in his own death. He, he got to be more and more out of control. As I put in the review, he eventually does, the, the ticking time bomb eventually does go off. And... Yes, that's, that's rather appropriate. I'm just not sure how I feel about Mike basically being okay, other than, yeah, having shot Jim, obviously. And, yeah, then, then he gets back to the house, and I'm sitting there thinking, it's too late, you made your choice last night, dude. You had your chance. And, no, wait, she's there, and the, oh, wait, no, she's not, oh, well, okay, they're hugging, and credits. And I guess it, it doesn't completely leave you feeling that everything is going to be perfect between them, necessarily, but I still do find that it's maybe a little too upbeat, considering how abrupt it is. I don't have a problem with the movie ending abruptly, but the fact that it isn't a complete tragedy that, I don't know, I suppose you could say two of our three leads, or, well, one of our two leads, comes out okay, basically. I mean, Mike has the job, and it's, they seem to be getting back together. That's the overall implication I read in The Hug. It doesn't push him away, which I personally think that, that would have been that at the, at the end of the day, she's just, no, it's, she, she can't have it anymore. And, and maybe he would be like telling her, no, but Jim isn't in the picture anymore. Not necessarily telling her why, especially not the details. And she would just be, no, it, like I said earlier, you, you made your choice last night. There's, there's, you know, something's got to give. At some point, she can't, she, she can't keep waiting for him and giving him chances. And, again, I'm, it's, it's the combination. It's that it's so abrupt and that Mike makes it out. Okay, if, if it was just one of those things, I'd be basically fine with it, but I think the combination is a bit too much. Now, the... I do like that if you really stop and think about it, basically the reason Jim dies is because he was horny. Because if he hadn't gone by Letty, I think, and stayed longer than he should have and forced his way into the house and everything. He was, he was being turned down at the door. And if, if Patty had just given him the details, well, and I, actually, Jim would have gone in anyway. And he he doesn't quite get away from, from Flaco, and then suddenly he's mugging Flaco and his homies, and, yes, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I can't make that sound natural. 
I will not use that word again, rest assured. I'm fascinated with the... Oh dear, this is... I'm... I... Okay, turning off the highbrow vocabulary from now on, I promise. I'm gonna try to find a happy medium. I... I'm not... I can't make it sound natural, me using those words. But I do love the culture. And I really sympathize with... Yeah, I, I think I should stop digging at this point. Yeah, he... Suddenly he's mugging them. And he keeps pushing it. And so when Flaco is involved with Casper there at the end, of course it's going to go bad. And it, it didn't really need to happen, but... Again, Jim was horny, and he, Mike even said, he, she's not going to let you in after what happened last time. Or wait, no, that, that might have been Letty or Patty. I think those were the two names, two sisters. <laughs> I'd rather like the two, rea the, their reactions when the, when Flake, you know, at first Patty's like, yeah, kick his ass. And then when Mike and Jim turn the tables on Flake on the, the game, he, you know, Patty is horrified, just as Letty was before when Jim was getting his ass kicked. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's very, you know, it's set up and pay off. He, he's, he's burning bridges. He's, he's making it more, di well, when you see the scene, you know it's going to come back and bite him. It's, he's, he's just immediately you know, just, yeah, but burning bridges, there's, there is, you, you can't just everywhere you go cause chaos and then not eventually have some of that chaos hit you again. There has to be a certain level of, of discipline, of control, you, he's, he's unrestrained, you know, they, they steal the dope from that one guy, and they also say, you know, if we go back there, that guy's gonna shoot us. And yeah, they they are everywhere they're going. They're they're doing something that's gonna get them in trouble. That you also think that maybe too small is gonna like is that how you pronounce it? it, it yeah, that, that he's gonna accidentally shoot them you know, with the gun, because he's not at all taking it seriously enough, clearly. But, but yeah, basically, what goes around comes around. He is causing all this violence, and sooner or later that violence is going to hit him as well. Now, I really want to talk about the, the whole thing with Marta and the pregnancy because that was a really well done, I mean, there, there's really something to think about there. I mean, I, one thing I say in the review itself is that the thematic is a bit on the nose, the, the gym is a bad influence, like, in the first several scenes, there's just constantly, Mike is going, okay, but, you know, I, let's just, we, we have to actually do this, you, know, you have to help me get a job. And, you know, Mike throws the, the applications out the window, and he convinces him to have beer, he convinces him to, was it smoke? Smoke weed, at least. I, think, I guess the cigarettes were just his own decision, and you know, all this stuff. You know, it's just, yeah, that was a bit obvious. It's a good thematic. It's, it's the execution. But the Marta situation and the pregnancy there, that was really psychologically well-crafted. Because there, you can really look at that scene and really interpret it, which I really like. 
I guess I'll start with the basic motivation. At least Marta, she she pretty much says it that she she loves him and she wants his kid, and that is something that actually if, even if he doesn't want to stay, she she literally says. You've done your part. If, if you don't want to raise this baby with me, you can go. I will take care of it myself, but I want your baby. And that is something that... I really don't want to stereotype genders here, but some women will do that. And that is just... Yeah, it's... You know, you can certainly interpret it as an expression of love. She, she wants his baby. She just she doesn't just want a kid, and she certainly doesn't want to trap him in fatherhood. She just wants his kid. She wants to raise his kid, and I, I don't know. I guess I'm not entirely certain why she tells him if she is so okay with him not being there to be the father. I guess it's t so that he, yeah, I'll, I'll have to think some more on that, but yeah, Jim, part of it is the, the shock of it, that he, and, and this is, I think every, every man who finds out that they're going to be a father, because he tries to convince her at first. He tries to talk her into having the abortion. And she even says that her father did the same. With, you know, she also, he also didn't want her to have this kid. Especially without the marriage already being settled. And once because that's kind of his, well, I'll, I'll get to him to why he might not want a kid in a little bit, but, excuse me, I guess part of her to telling him is seeing if he'll stay, sort of giving him the chance to stay, yeah, and I think that might also be sort of the tendency, again, I don't want to stereotype, but I think a lot of women would tell the father that they're going to be a father. I don't know, that might actually depend on the woman. Anyway, yes, so he finds out he's going to be a father and he didn't plan for it. And yes, I, I honestly think pretty much any man in that situation is going to be at least somewhat shocked. It's not necessarily going to leave, not necessarily going to, especially not you're going to do what Jim does, but, or, yeah, does what, it, he literally threatens to kill her. Anyway, the, the, the problem is that it's not just, he's not just any man, he is on the brink of a psychotic break. And, yeah, the, the, that pretty much triggers it, and the, I, I like that they use the, that same editing style for each of the, these, I don't know, I, let's call them psychotic flashes. He has one at the start of the film. I think it might be when he's waking up from the nightmare, which was also really nicely done. Very unsettling the way it's edited. Very, very dream-like. The whole thing, night vision and sort of non-linear quality to it. Very nicely done. And and then again, when he yells at the other driver, right after he's found out that he's not going to be joining the LAPD. And those are the only two times it happens in the first 45 minutes of the movie or so. And then it happens 
four times in the last 20 minutes. And yeah, that... <laughs> the... It's, it's becoming more and more imminent. The, the, the time bomb is ticking closer. And, yeah, he, he almost kills her, he almost kills Mike, he, he, you know, speeds, he wants to kill a cop, apparently, he, and, and then there at the end, he, he kills Flaco, and the other, the, the, the last two guys, I mean, and he didn't, he didn't need to kill Casper either, but then the, the third guy he kills, like, I've got three children, and then he shoots him. And then the last guy just pleads, and he didn't, doesn't appear to be armed, not doing anything, and then cuts back to Mike, and you just hear the gunshots. It's just unbelievable. And then he gets in the car, and then the, the old guy comes in with, with this big automatic shotgun or something and shoots. I think that it got a little over stylistic. It's not supposed to be flashy, but I don't think it was... I don't know, I'm just not crazy about the, the slow-mo there and us seeing the bullets. I think it was a little bit too much. I do like the, that we do eventually get a reveal on his son's face with the blood and everything. And, and he talks about, and, and you just instantly know he's been hit in the spine. And that's it. And, and he talked about his, you know, that other guy earlier lost his, lost his limbs, didn't want to live, but he lived because of the doctors. Because that's what modern medical science can do. And... Yeah, so, and, and you just, you knew the moment that he got hit like that, that he didn't, he wouldn't want to live like that either. And he eventually talks Mike into it. And we're back to the ending, which I already discussed. Now, the, the, the different reasons that this might be is the... I, th I think basically you could chalk it out. It, it basically comes down. It basically comes down to it. either it's frustration or he he wants her to to accept the choice he's already made to to sort of to be more okay with the choice he's already made because he. He has made the choice of going to Colombia and you know, possibly seeing what was it war time? I don't remember the exact words. It's a lot of slang in the movie. And you know he he's not going to be able to marry her at that point. You know. J. Jonah Jameson told him as much, and yeah, he yeah, actually might not have been J. Jonah Jameson, I just wanted to do the reference. So, so he's, he's pretty much made that choice, and now she's telling him, if you stay with me, you know, we're going to have a kid together. And so the it's it's driving it very much against the there are these two choices: stay with her or go back to what he had with the army. And it's very clear that when he's with her, that's the closest he gets to being happy. That's the closest we see. To him being happy and content, he he's he's very antsy and quick to aggression in in 
LA and around the other, you know, in, in that whole environment. And when he's with her, which is why it's really smart that the movie opens with him waking up near her. With her, it's clearly a completely different story. He's much more relaxed. Even, even waking up from a nightmare, he has her to comfort him. And so, so yeah, he's, he's making the choice between her and this violence that he has a... He's, he's attracted to violence, and he is that through, throughout. That's not just like when he isn't with her. That's basically, it's probably pretty much his nature, not just, not just something that, like, the military put in him, you know, the, the military brought it more out in him, maybe, or cultivated it in him, but you know, we all have a certain drive to violence in us, and perhaps his was a little stronger, or maybe it just, yeah, it, that there is a certain drive to violence, so he, he sort of misses getting to be violent, which the army encouraged him, as we find out, with, you know, just shoot, keep on moving. As far as I know, they weren't supposed to be there, they should have just stayed out of the area, as he says to Mike, you know, it, and so, he's, he's getting to go back, to that with with Columbia and he, he does he tries to avoid it he 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 goes for the LAPD and when he goes for the Fed he also he wasn't expecting Columbia that's just something they they pop on him they that's not the exact term, but whatever. They, he, he wasn't expecting that, and he, he's trying to get away from the violence, and he wants to get married to her, and then he finds out that it's, it's really his only chance of this, excuse me, of, what was it, the Homeland Security, of working for Homeland Security. It's, it's that or nothing. And that kind of, that makes it very difficult for him. Having, having the violence dangled right in front of him. And he, he, he goes ahead. He, he chooses the violence sort of over her. And he probably does regret his decision and you know, he's trying to find the time to tell her you know, that's that's why he goes there that's why they have to go to Mexico it's not just <laughs> that he's horny again it's genuinely he has to tell her he has to see her one last time so that she can know and when there, the, the other two both point out that he clearly wants to be with her. And again, making it more difficult for him. He, he feels like he's made the choice. And he basically does. He has made the choice. And then th that's kind of... And, and that brings us back to the two of them in the car and him knowing that she's not going to get an abortion. Either he is frustrated with having made the choice and not getting to be with her, not getting to procreate with her, or he is trying to convince her, you know, again, burning bridges, trying to get her to give up on him because he already has made that choice. And the... Yeah, the, the, the way he... The, the way 
he actually conveys a lot of frustration when she tells him, you know, that she loves him and this whole, yeah, it just, and, and eventually it goes to, to, to the gun and again that could be a sort of, yeah, may, maybe he's pushing it as far as he can to get her to Because it would it, it would be easier if if she would just accept as long as she's telling him that she's there and he's they're going to be having a kid together that makes it very difficult for him to go back to the Fed and the other thing is that she he might be so frustrated and so so angry with her that he is almost ready to kill her because he has been he has been itching for for violence he hasn't gotten it yet he if if we go back through the film and basically he he slightly beats up Flago and the others he mostly takes a beating and other than that he points a gun at them he doesn't shoot anybody at that point he, you know, yeah, he, he doesn't really get an outlet, and he's been used to shooting people. He, he was used to being somewhere where he got to shoot people and, and get that out of his system, get the, and, and he's maybe having trouble readjusting with the possible PTSD. That's, again, that's one way to interpret the, the psychotic flashes. And the... And, and yeah, part, part of his frustration is also that apparently the... He, he thought that... I didn't quite get the thing about taking a shot. I don't, I don't know if that's some kind of... If that would have... Was it infertile, or was it some kind of birth control? But it's, I'm, I figure it's something like that. So yeah, he was expecting that they could have non-committal sex, and she didn't want that. She chose to lie to him, and go ahead and have this kid. And that's maybe also something that to him, it's, it's things aren't going the way he wanted them to. He, he expected to be in the LAPD. He expected to be able to marry her. He, he expected to be away from the violence of the war. But none of that worked out. And now she's pregnant with this kid when he specifically, they, they had agreed that she was going to some kind of birth control or something, and maybe that's just too much. And and it could, you know, if he had killed her, that would also have meant that there isn't, you know, a, a baby version of him out there that he has to think about. And that is, again, that's something that a lot of guys find difficult to deal with. The yeah, the, the idea of procreating, that, that there's going to be more of us out there. And especially someone like Jim, someone so tortured. Yeah, the, the, he, he gets into very self-destructive behavior in parts of the movie, so there's... You know, to, some part of him doesn't like himself. He doesn't want to procreate that, that part of him. He, he doesn't, that, that part of him doesn't want there to be more of him out there. He, yeah, you know, being self-destructive is a kind of way of saying, I, I know that I'm beyond repair, and I'm just, he's, he's trying to, yeah, literally destroy himself. To, and, and then when he finds out that there's going to be more of him out there, he comes dangerously close to killing her. To, to keep that from happening. Now, 
I'm not sure I properly went into the... He's, he's kind of attracted to the violence, but he's also trying to get away from the violence. And that is, again, that's something I, I believe universal to, to human beings, being, being attracted to violence and repulsed by it. It's something recently Sinister also went into quite nicely. And, you know, if you want to get more international with that, watch Thesis, I think that's how you pronounce it, or Thesis, by Alejandro Amenovar, director of Abra los Ojos, the movie that was remade into Vanilla Sky. Anyway, it, it attracts him, but it also repulses him, and part of him really knows that he's, he doesn't want to go back to that. I, I mean, he, if, if he was hoping to become part of the LAPD, there's going to be some violence, sure, but it's not the SWAT team, it's not the army. He's, he's trying to settle down, and he's trying to get a job where he will be doing good, but he's not, he's not killing people as, as a common thing. You know, the, the, you know, basically police, if they're killing someone, that was their last resort, ideally. That was the only way they could solve that situation. And, yeah, so, he is trying to get away from it. But then when it's dangled in front of him, and it seems like the only real choice if he wants to stay in the basic field, then he does make that choice. And he, he could have, you know, Mike points it out to him, you, you could be... You could move, move to Mexico, I guess he was thinking, and be, you know, work in touristing, because he speaks both American and Spanish, and, excuse me, and that makes sense, but could he really settle down, is the thing, and or it's part of the thing, and, yeah. I could briefly get into the movie doesn't make clear how what Jim was like before not not much of what he was like before being in the military I said army before he was actually a ranger wasn't he yeah I'm not an expert on the military practices of the US or any other country for that matter so don't drop a drum on my head for that. He... There, there are a few lines about... Jim, the, the, the Toussaint says something like, the craziest, the craziest head I know is going to be... is going to have a badge. What was, was that what he said? Something like that. And... Yeah, that, that does tell you that before the army, and, and he also says, well then again, he also later says you used to be chill before the military, or se seeming to say before the military, I think. So it's, it's a little difficult to say, but, but my point is, he could have been violent, at least to a certain extent, before the military duty, and, yeah, the, the, and it could be that that just sort of bubbles to the surface once he has been in the military, that in the military he got, I mean, in, in part it is a story about someone having trouble coping with regular life after a tour of duty, and 
that is sadly something that that happens. It's it's not something that you've heard a lot about before, like, what was it? I, I don't, I suppose the Vietnam War was the first war that we really, really heard about, that veterans were really messed up, especially psych, psychologically. And pretty much what I'd say is the you know, say World War II veterans, and veterans from earlier wars as well. It just wasn't expressed as much, or... It, it... Yeah, it's just... And, and it's something that we hear more about today, and so it's... And with, you know, wars still very much happening, and... They're still being actual real life stories about the people coming back and having trouble readjusting. It is very, very apropos to do stories like this now. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.